chronic stress. I'm going to teach this. This, this is my example to get you to teach you about subluxation in a different way. We, we typically all understand subluxation uh, on, a, on a relatively basic level of that there's, a, there's some sort of a biomechanical disturbance in the spine and that biomechanical disturbance causes degeneration of the spine prematurely and some sort of neurological damage or interference. I want to teach you a def, uh, uh, something about the stress response. What is the stress response? Some people call it fight or flight, right? You've heard of this. So the reality is if you, if, you know, if you were sitting at a pond having a drink of water and all of a sudden a tiger comes jumping out to chase you, certain physiological responses would immediately happen in your body, right? Let's talk about what happens. First thing that would happen is what? Actually, you would downregulate your insulin receptors. The reason for that is that you would want to increase the amount of blood sugar in your blood because you're going to need sugar in your blood because you're going to be running from a tiger. Does that make sense? you're going to increase your blood lipids, right? You're actually going to increase your LDL because LDL, which is, that's the bad cholesterol, right? There's no such thing as bad cholesterol. There's just appropriate cholesterol and appropriate cholesterol. Your body only makes appropriate cholesterol for, for what it needs, all right? So it raises the LDL because LDL is what makes your stress hormones, which you need to produce stress hormones because you've got a tiger chasing you, right? And it also helps in wound clotting or, or healing the wound, right? But you also need to increase your sticky factors in your blood, right? Because if you're getting chased by a tiger and you get bit, you're probably going to need to clot that off, right? But we're going to suppress our immune system. We're going to decrease. We're going to downregulate the function of our immune system, right? Because we really don't need an, a, our cell-mediated immune system when we're being chased by a tiger. Now, if we live through the experience, we're going to need to turn that on because we're going to need to maybe heal up some wounds. But during the process, we don't really need our immune system to be functioning. What we need to be doing is spending all of our energy getting away from there, right? It also, what it does is it it decreases our ability to focus in order to increase our sense of awareness, right? So we, we're getting chased by a tiger, right? We need to be really aware of that, right? Like, what's going on? Where is it at? What is it, you know? Do you ever see a stressed out individual? Are they kind of like that? And you're trying to have a conversation with them. And yeah, yeah, I hear what you, yeah, 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 my cell phone's right here. Did you say something like that, right? I mean, they seem to have a little bit of a problem focusing, right? Well, that, that's because in a stress response, we need to increase our awareness it, and when we do increase our awareness, it decreases our ability to focus or to learn. I mean, if you're being chased by a tiger, do you really need to be able to read a book? You need to be able to learn. So it suppresses our learning centers, right? I want to go through these because I want to make sure all, we, I hit every point. Oh, yeah. We use up our serotonin, right? Serotonin is our mood stabilizer, right? So when we're under a stress response, we're trying to stabilize our mood. We're going to start using up all of our serotonin, which are our, our mood stabilizers. We're going to crave fats and sugars. Why are we going to crave fats and sugars? Because our stress hormones are made up of fats and sugars, and we're under a stress response. We're getting chased by a tiger, so we need lots of stress hormones, right? So we're going to crave fats and sugars. Do you ever feel like you crave fats and sugars? Probably none of you guys have ever felt that way, right? <laughs> we're going to increase our blood pressure, right? I mean, we need to increase our blood pressure so we can pump this blood all through our body so we can get away. We're going to increase our heart rate. We're going to increase our blood sugar and blood fats. So let's wrap this all up together. In America, we typically don't get chased by taggers much. Would you agree? But do we think we maybe live under levels of chronic long-term stress? Does that make sense? Okay. In hunting gathering societies, typically stressful situations were short-lived, right? I mean, I do something to save my life and then that's over, right? That's not how we live now. We've changed our culture in a way that we really don't have life-threatening things happening on a day-to-day, moment-by-moment basis. But we do live under this chronic level of stress, okay, which causes a chronic stress response in the body. So how did what I tell you, how did that sound toward having diabetes? In increased level of blood sugars. How did it sound toward heart disease? Increased heart rate, increased LDL in the blood, right? How did it sound toward auto, um, autoimmune disorders? How did it sound toward, you know, what, what is cancer? Cancer is an immune system problem. So we've downregulated our immune system, right? Because we don't need our immune system. We're being chased by a tiger. So we've downregulated our immune system. However, we've got lots of insulin and, and lots of sex hormones, so sex hormone binding globulin. So what's that mean? We have rapid cell division. So you've got people with diabetes. So they've got really, really high insulin, but they've got suppressed immune systems because they're under stress. So your immune system's not detecting the cancer cells, but you're causing rapid cell division with insulin. Does that sound good? 
See, what I, what, what I learned when I learned about the stress response is that the stress response in the body, you say, well, that doesn't sound very good. Why does my body do that? The stress re response of the body was innately created for you to get yourself out of that situation and then be done with it, right? It was to buy you time to get yourself out of the life-threatening situation. So, i.e., you're on an iceberg, right? So I put Larry on an iceberg. He's sitting on an iceberg, and his body starts to pull all the blood to his core, right, so that he can have blood for his organs and his brain. Now, is that intelligent? It's intelligent, right? Is it healthy? No, because it makes some cells, like his, his foot's going to rot off, right? So it's not necessarily healthy for the foot, you know, but it's intelligent. Here's my point. His body's doing that to keep him alive, to buy him time to get himself out of the stressful situation. It's buying him time to get himself off the iceberg. All right? Now, I'm sure I could invent a drug to give to him so that while he's on the iceberg, we, we keep blood going to his foot and keep his foot alive longer, right? Now, that would be good for his foot, but would that cause him to die sooner? My point is this, as long as he's sitting on the iceberg, does it really matter what we do to him? It doesn't really matter, does it? The object is to get him off the iceberg. That's the problem with America. Everybody's on the iceberg. Instead of teaching them how to get off the iceberg, we're giving them drugs so they can live on the iceberg better. It temporarily makes them feel good, but they're dying sooner with all kinds of diseases because of the chronic stress response in their body. Here's the deal. What causes the stress response? Hans Selye, who's a Canadian researcher, who's probably the world's leading authority on stress, says this, that all stressors have the same effect on your body. It doesn't matter if you're being chased by a Bengal tiger or flipping a guy off in traffic. It causes the same response in your body. Anything that causes toxicity or deficiency in your body is a stressor and triggers the stress response. Anything that's toxic or deficient in your body. So if you're deficient nutrients in your body, it's going to trigger the stress response. If you're toxic in something in your body, it's going to trigger the stress response. Subluxation is a toxicity and a deficiency. It's a toxicity of bad information back to the brain, isn't it? It's an overload of nociceptive or bad information back to the brain. The joint's not moving right. That's a negative experience to the joint. It's sending negative nociceptive information back to the brain. So it's a toxicity. But it's also a deficiency because it's a lack of proprioceptive movement back to the brain. The joint's supposed to be moving and sending signals back to the brain, but because it's not moving, it's not. So there's a deficiency in proprioception or movement stimulation. There's a deficiency in movement and there's a toxicity in nociceptive information. My point to you is that subluxation causes a stress response which causes all those things we just talked about. So when you adjust someone and correct the subluxation, you turn down the stress response in the body which decreases the risk of someone having what? Heart disease, diabetes, attention deficit disorder, autism, asthma. So when you're sitting there thinking, this doctor's telling me that if he adjusts this kid, he can improve the kid's focus, and you're thinking, how does that work? That's how it works. Because when the kid has a toxicity or deficiency, when he has a subluxation, it causes a decreased ability to learn and to focus, and an increased sense of alertness, because he's in a stress response, and you have to correct the subluxation to remove that. Does that help things make sense to you a little bit better? that give you more of a scientific or a logical perspective on behind how what we're doing is helping these people. We have to reduce the stress response. Every time we adjust someone, we reduce the stress response, we increase serotonin levels. What are serotonin levels? Mood stabilizers, right? And help the person. Now, unfortunately, we can adjust the person. They can still do a whole bunch of other crap that causes the stress response, right? But the reality is you have to understand the bigness of the adjustment because it's big.